can't say that out loud. <laughs> and then, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, an agendized meeting, so you, need, you will need to call the meeting to order and um, open the meeting, and Caleb will take it from there. Okay, hey, uh, good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order for uh, the date of December 15th, 2022. Um, we'll skip the rest of this for when we get everybody in here for the, the, the rest of the meeting. Um, but for this part, I'll hand it over to Caleb. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Do we need to take roll call? Kurt, maybe, maybe roll call. Either take roll call if the clerk wants us to make a notation, but we'll, we do need the roll call for the, for the minutes. So it'll probably be... Okay. To call roll. Commissioner Stoddard. Here. Oh. Commissioner Grace. Here. Commissioner Lorcher. Here. Commissioner Seal. Here. Absent are Commissioner Wheeler and Yearsley. All right, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, to, to talk with you this evening, and it really is, it says training on there. I guess there's some element of training to this, but I do really, really want this to be a conversation. If you have any questions, we do have some things. Uh, Kurt Starman from Legal uh, and myself want to cover this evening, but if there's any questions that pop up during the presentation, feel free to, to interrupt and uh, we'll try to address those. Maybe before I go any further, just thank you for your service to the community too. Uh, I'd like to take that opportunity. I realize this is a pretty thankless job, so uh, I will extend a little bit of thanks. Um, I will also just call out, we have Dave Miles, for those that don't know, that is the Mayor's Chief of Staff. Um, the Mayor was planning on joining this evening, um, but had something else uh, pop up. The reason I call Dave out a little bit is to let you know, I know they're in the process of searching for a new Planning and Zoning Commissioner to uh, fill the vacant seat. I think Commissioner Seal has been part of that process, the ongoing process. <laughs> um, and uh, in 23, we actually have a couple of commissioners whose seats are up. So um, get those requests in. If, if you are looking to uh, Commissioner Grace, you're, you're one of those actually that I believe your commission expires here at the end of January. So um, usually that goes through Dave and, and that process to reappoint or look for a new commissioner. So again, just thank you for your service. Um, <clears throat> and again, this is, this is a little formal, I guess a noticed agenda. Um, but but uh, again, the format is going to be a little more free flowing. Um, and if after this, you know, you're laying in bed, can't sleep, and something pops in your mind, shoot an email. Don't call at two in the morning, but shoot an email whenever you want. Call us during business hours, and we can walk you through uh, any questions you may have. You're reviewing the packet. You got a question about a project. Feel free to call um, the, that project planner, Bill Parsons, myself, whatever. If you have a process question or anything like that. But um, so this is again a little more. Um, scripted, um, but if anything comes up during your, your service, feel free to reach out to us. Um, okay, I think that's, oh, I have one more thing to note before I kind of get into our, our presentation. This is, this is one in a series of, of discussions. Um, I was here about three, four months ago and did an, an, uh, another training uh, presentation. Um, we'll be back here in the near future, probably not even that much time in between. I'm thinking January, maybe February. We are toying with some, more than toying, we're seriously considering some changes to the staff report format. So we want to get some feedback from you once we get uh, a template kind of addressed that, that's not, not a final draft because we want your take, but we want to give you a little bit more of what the vision could be for that and then get your feedback on that and see if there's some additional tweaks to make to that. We have talked to council about that and we're getting some feedback from them right now as well and then we'll, we'll uh, come back to you with that discussion as well. So. All right, with that being said, here's the official agenda then for this portion. Um, a lot of this will be um, somewhat repetitive for you, but we're going to make it new and fresh as well. Um, so the, the overarching themes are the same because we cover that with you at orientation and then reinforce. Um, but we're going to kind of put a finer point, hopefully, on some of the, the ideas and the best practices that you've previously heard from, from staff. Um, I would also just say if, if you have best practices for yourself that you want to share with other commissioners, like, hey, I'm pretty proud of how I do this, or are you proud of how someone else does that, and, and uh, think maybe as a commission uh, you could function better by uh, adopting some of those best practices, I think this is a good time to share those as well. Um, but we'll talk, I'll talk about the comp plan and the UDC and what the differences are between those two documents and what, what similarities are. Um, we'll talk about quasi-judicial decisions, which is 
pretty much the world you live in. And yeah, you do have some d discretion in that. I'll emphasize some, I guess, in that a little bit. There are the codes and the policies, and that's some of what we'll talk about this evening. Um, you are here um, because you are uh, a valued member of our community. Uh, you have a heart for our community, or else you wouldn't be serving. Um, during these, these um, proceedings, though, we generally ask you to use your head more than your heart. Uh, sometimes there's passion that comes before you, and so we'll talk about that, how to do that, how to consider maybe some of the public testimony uh, you receive in, in your decision-making process. And then in interpreting and applying those standards and policies. Um, I'll touch on this, you know, really looking at the staff report will be your guide uh, to some of those things and, and really how to use that and ask questions and then um, making those decisions. And, and Kurt's going to uh, kind of cover um, most, of, most of that topic on your agenda. Um, again, Q&A at the end, but feel free to interrupt, and we're going to try to get you out of here in, in uh, 30 minutes or less. Oops. So the comprehensive plan, and again, sorry, some of this is repetitive. It is required by state law. All cities and, and counties in Idaho are required to have one. There aren't any real repercussions if you don't, but it is a state, state requirement. Um, ours is our vision for the future, as is most communities, paints a picture of who we want to be. Uh, in, into the future, sets citywide goals and policies, has action items as well, so goals and policies and action items. We highlight the applicable ones for you. So we maybe, it's maybe not 100% of all the applicable ones, but the most applicable policies we pull out into the staff report. So if, you know, I would encourage you to look at those, um, especially if you think it's a marginal project, I'll just say it that way. Um, there is um, uh, subjectiveness to that, finding in the affirmative or negative. You could argue either, either side of that a lot of times. And so staff evaluates that and says, this is what we believe that it complies with this policy in the comp plan or not. You could make an argument the other way. And I guess I would encourage you, and this is kind of at the heart of some of this presentation this evening, um, when, you, when you are maybe not in favor of a project or leaning that way, Go to the staff report, see what findings and analysis has been done, and pick those ones you're saying, yeah, I see where staff was maybe coming with that, but I don't believe this, this does that. I think it does the opposite, or at least it's not in the affirmative. So, so use those in the, in the staff report. The applicable um, policies from the comp plan are called out for you there. Um, and then the comp plan is the, the foundation for the UDC. So you'll see that in a couple of the other slides I have coming up, but it sets that foundation for your standards. So the comp plan is, is more <clears throat> a visioning, broader, wider range, citywide kind of document. And then the UDC standards or laws are going to be applicable to that individual project. So if you're R4, here's your dimensional standards. Here's your height maximums. Here's your whatever. And so, but this, this document, the, compre the comp plan, um, sets the standards then for what we adopt as a city for the law. Um, it does include text, as you know. And, and the future land use map, which most people, well, that's where they want to live, is the map. You know, it's the, what are the properties designated. Um, so that is part of the comp plan as well. And then <clears throat> also shows our, our future city limits. So then the UDC. So again, this is the law. Uh, it's Meridian City Code Title 11, but usually lovingly referred to as Unified Development Code, the, or the UDC. So I won't read through all of this. You know that it sets the standards for all those things I already mentioned during the previous slide and more than what's on this slide. Um, but standards, standards, standards. These are the things you, thou shall comply with it when applicable. Uh, you do not have a magic wand. You can't make them go away. If they're zoned R4 and it's a 15-foot setback, then it's a 15-foot setback. There's not a, you know, now. That said, there are certain elements in our, comp or in our UDC or you can ask for some relief from those standards. So alternative compliance, you get those from time to time. Variances, you get those from time to time. But without that companion application or analysis, again, there's no way to get out of or otherwise waive um, those standards. So the UDC is the law, it's the code, it's the standard. And again, we have some, some ways to work within those, but for the most part, they when they apply, they apply. Um, it also sets forth all the all the... Um, the process, you know, what goes to PNZ, what's approved administratively, uh, so on and, and so forth. 
So kind of when you look at those uh, side by side, they're both key. The, the policy document, the comp plan, and um, what we implement the comp plan with, our, our zoning, our UDC, um, are both very important when you're reviewing projects and making your findings for approval. So I, I think I've touched on a lot of this, but there it is kind of side by side uh, in a slide. A long range for the comp plan, visioning, future advisory. Um, it's based on legislation, so I didn't look at this before. I think there's 17 elements these days in LUPA that are required, somewhere in there, it's in the teens, um, that everyone's comprehensive plan has to address. Housing, transportation, education, critical areas, um, there's a power line facilities. So it goes on to 15, 16, 17 um, that has to, have to be addressed in everyone's uh, comprehensive plan. And then again, the, the, as it sets the direction for the zoning, which are specific. Recording in progress. Um, I think I'll move on from that one. Uh, here it is kind of a, a, in a different format. A lot of the same information, just, just presented a little bit differently. So policy um, is not only the comp plan, but some also some specific area plans. So 10 mile, there's 10 mile specific area plan. We have the field specific area plan, which you'll see more and more over the years uh, in fields. Those are guiding documents. They aren't a, they aren't thou shall. A little more squishy, a little more visionary, right? You, a little more interpretation in there. Um, but it does still have a general direction we're trying to go uh, with properties and as a city. Um, master plans, so sewer master plans and those types of things are kind of all live in the policy realm and then we implement those things again with the things that are a little more black and white, more standards, your zoning, your subdivision standards, um, conditional use permits and, and design review. Um, so again, a lot of the same information just shown to you a little bit differently. So then, then you, you kind of uh, add on to that thought, annexation and zoning. <clears throat> down to uh, certificate of zoning compliance design review and some of those things are done administratively so the things at the top on this slide you have i'll just say a lot of discretion with annexation and zoning and rezones you have a lot of discretion and again i'll call your attention to the staff report at the very end of the staff report are the official findings some of them are pretty dry one of them, when you look at annexation and zoning, says that we find that this is in the best interest of the city of Meridian. That's pretty open to how you want to interpret that. Now, we'd ask you to put a little bit of definition on why you believe it is or isn't in the best interest, but there's, with annexation and zoning, my point is you have a lot of discretion in that. Really, the applicant is coming to you asking to come into the city, and it needs to be right for the city. We have a level of premier we're trying to meet. And that's not as easily defined um, on a site-by-site -site or case-by-case -case basis. So it really is up to them to sell that to the city. Here's why it's in your best interest. Um, if you don't think it is, for annexation and zoning and rezones, you have a lot more discretion. You still need reasons, but you don't. it doesn't have to be so much or explicitly grounded in the policies and the codes and those types of things you have a, again a little more direct i would still ask that it is um but it can be a little more um i don't know what the right word is i'm, I'm looking for there again you just have a little more uh interpretation or it's up for for discretion and then as you work your way down conditional use permits even um, you do have some discretion in that it's not a by right use but basically your job is to look at that and say what what conditions are are appropriate to mitigate any impacts of that use and if you can't come up with those you can deny the project but you need to tell them what they could change to potentially gain your support for a project in the future nope we don't like it the way you've got it designed go back to the drawing board and if you address this and this and that maybe you know we're, we'll, we're open to you got to give them some direction on what if they it, to to get there and it wouldn't be you're coming in with multifamily and we want to see single family necessarily it's more about design because if, if multifamily is a conditionally allowed use you can mitigate that and density is a reason right if, if they come in at the very top of that and you say we're denying it because it's too dense that's fair but you can need to say okay well it doesn't need to be exact come in with 12.1 and we'll approve you no you wouldn't state it that way, but if you lose some units and try again, you know, give them some direction. Or, you know, if you come in with better connectivity and a little less density and more parking, you know, that's that's what we'd like to see with the next iteration. 
there is a line there too on conditioning and over conditioning and changing the project from the dais and designing it from them. And that's a little bit more of an art as well to say, okay, we can envision this same project basically with some conditions versus we're conditioning it to death and now it's not even the same project. Those projects you probably just want to deny and say, start again. Here's some, th here's some direction for you when you start again, what we want to see with that project. So I'm not telling you when to do that. That is something you're going to have to kind of fill your way. But no, if you're taking lists and it's two-sided of changes in conditions, maybe time for them to just start again. Um, I'd also just say, and this doesn't necessarily go for conditional use permits, but just in general, you know, council I think is pretty appreciative if you guys can work out most of the issues. If that means you got to continue a project for a month or two, so that you have a solid recommendation that you can make to council that you're comfortable with and there's not outstanding issues about you know, the applicant doing some things that you guys don't see but it's only shared with council. Historically, they, they almost expect that. Um, doesn't mean it has to be super clean and no one's gonna show up and testify at the hearing, but you shouldn't leave it where it's unknown for you. You know what council's gonna get, you've seen it, you're comfortable with whatever recommendation you're making and it's not Oh, well, when you get to council, make sure you have ACHD's conditions. If you don't have them and you need, need them, then wait, get those conditions, hear that report, or whatever that thing is you need. Um, generally, don't punt that or push that to council, if that makes sense. Um, so again, kind of going back, I got a little bit off track there, but going down of the levels of when you have more discretion to less uh, subdivisions, Again, if, if the lots and the blocks and all, and all that complies with the standards, you have very little discretion. If their zoning is already in place, if it's already zoned appropriately in the city and they're not asking you for concurrent rezone or, app or, or uh, annexation, you have very little discretion in that. You can, you can ask and even tell them to some degree some of the amenities are open space and provide them that feedback, but denying something gets a little hairy because they have the entitlement. They've got the zoning in place, and as long as their plat complies with the UDC standards, we really can't say, well, you know what? We're really not interested in your develop because the, zon the zoning is really where you get entitled and can develop consistent with that zone. So ho hopefully that makes sense. That doesn't mean, again, you can't condition some things, um, but even density gets a little bit tricky there where they've got the entitlement and as long as they can have their lots that are at least this wide by at least this long and street frontages and turnarounds and all that meets our standards. Um, I'll also bring that up for um, parking. I mean, that comes up from time to time and I'm back to conditional use permits now, so I, I apologize. But parking, I know with multifamily especially, has been a... Um, a concern, a topic of discussion. So a couple things on that. Um, and actually it's on um, the next slide. So I'll, next slide, two slides. Um, I'll cover it in this slide. So this one is uh, city codes and policies and when the application just doesn't seem appropriate. Um, so I, the, I've not heard these questions from you all, but I can just uh, imagine um, what happens when the commission hears from the public um, and that testimony doesn't seem to um, comply or jive with other agencies. So I'll call it out, right, ACHD. Sometimes we question some of their analysis, their staff report, um, school districts, some of the overcrowding things, we, we question some of that. And I think that's fair. You get someone, you know, uh, commenting to you, um, saying, you know, my kid is in a portable at their school. Um, there's some truth to that. There's reality. You should listen to that. That's public testimony and consider that. So listen. I guess I would just caution you or, or ask you to be careful in some of that. Um, depending on the application type, which we just talked about with that discretion, you can put more weight on that or maybe less. You know, again, if we're only at the subdivision stage and they already have their zoning in place and they're entitled to do something, we've at some degree that's been accounted for that additional car trip that additional student has already generally been accounted for the subdivision is and I don't it's not just a rubber stamp so that's where I kind of want to back off that a little bit but again as long as that project meets the dimensional standards of that zone it's it's by right um, to, to approve that subdivision but look at your findings if there's something in there and you're like you know the five or six findings that are for a subdivision you're like this one doesn't seem to jive 
and maybe there's a there's a reason to press pause, deny it, add a condition or two or whatever whatever may be appropriate. Um, but I guess again that 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 request or the answer to this first question, I guess, um, would be it's that's fine to listen to that if if it doesn't align. I think it's okay to even question from ACHD or the school district or. Nampa Meridian or whoever you're getting that information from and ask them and even question some of the analysis they do, I would ask that that be done in a professional manner. That would not be derogatory and, you know, um, some of that makes its way back and it then becomes tough to work, tough to, tougher to work with them sometimes. And they're great. Most of the agencies and staff we work with are, are very accommodating. Um, but part of the Meridian values the, the in their our care values the R is for respect. So just do that respectfully is my, my request. And I'm not inferring you haven't done that. Um, just that you know you are representing the city when you sit up there. And so again, I, I understand your volunteers, but your professional volunteers, and, and that would be some of that when we're interacting with the public and asking some of those questions or questioning some of the actions um, from other agencies. Quick, quick question for you on, and, and I think it's appropriate in here where. Um, we had an application come through recently that had um, the road size was reduced, um, which, you know, again, it met code, mm -hmm. but they also had common driveways, which met code, but it just t raised a lot of concerns um, to the point where we recommended denial on it. So how do we, I, I guess when, when I, uh, that's where I struggle with things is, you know, one piece is, uh, that's a cause for concern, you know, but generally speaking, okay, I see that that's going to go through. It's just when two or three things all kind of add up to the same disaster, how do we reconcile that? Or, I mean, is there a better process to do that? Good, good question. I think that even ties in with question two on the board here. Um, I'll use a common driveway. So we have um, standards for... Um, common driveways off of public streets or private streets and those types of standards. So we track that, staff to some degree tracks that. If there's a pattern of concern with that, we need to change our code. If it's a one-off, maybe that doesn't, you know, we don't want to penalize everybody else because maybe somebody, you think this might not work well or it wasn't done, it's done per the code, but it wasn't, it doesn't function well. Um, we try to look for those things like, okay, every other month now we're doing a variance or explaining this away somehow. Let's change our standards. So I think that's some feedback we can have. What about that design doesn't work for you? Tell us that, and then we can go and change the standard so it it prohibits or do otherwise doesn't allow whatever that issue is. Doesn't quite answer your question about where there's death by a thousand cuts. I, that's not what yeah. you said, but that's kind of what I heard. Right. Um, if you can... If, if you have that list and document that, I think that's fine. You, ha you have to go back through your list, though, and say, okay, does it comply with the current code? Right. Because if it's current code, unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do. Now, again, this, the next request, then, is for council and staff to look at that section of code and say, I don't like this code. Let's change it. Now, there's going to be a little lag time in there. This, that application may be getting through. But if you really don't like the standards, that's what we've tried to do with multifamily parking and others right. is – you know, change that to what we think you all are looking for, but we can't move the target, right? And that's not fair to applicants. If that's our standard and we say this plus one for every 10, that's really what it should be. Now, there can be circumstances in a conditional use permit, right? You have some discretion in that and parking. People come out and say, no, this isn't going to work. It's already a parking problem out there. I think you can consider that, but you need to document that, record that, tell staff what the issue is and why you're requiring twice as many visitor parking stalls or whatever the case may be. So again, the CUP, you've got to kind of couple everything we're talking about here. How much discretion do I have in the type of application? How does it relate to our codes and policies? And what's the on-the-ground situation? And kind of on the fly, <laughs> uh, make all that fit. So I think you can, um, where, where there is multiple things that are of concern. I think, or again, where I would caution you to some degree is how much of, of those things that are kind of stuck in your craw that aren't maybe deal breakers in and of themselves, but when you put them together, don't make the best project. Um, ask the applicant, would you be willing to? You're not conditioning them, but hey, are you willing to make this change? Maybe they are. Maybe they'll voluntarily make that change, and as long as that whatever changes still complies with code, off you go. Um, 
and again, if you get a, a couple of those that are uh, seem to fit the hey, this doesn't meet the policy in the comp plan, we just we don't like it, and because it doesn't do that, then then I think you're on solid ground as well. So just kind of double check those things that uh, anecdotally or in your mind you you have some issues with. Um, if they don't square with our code or comp plan, I think you have some some grounds there. Hopefully, hopefully that answered your question. It did to some degree. Yep. Um, I think I covered the second question there. Um, again, and the third question, you know, I, sometimes I, I get get a bad vibe or something about a project. And again, my requ my request would be just make sure that whatever comments you make or or if you're making the motion that it's grounded in facts that tie back again. I'm a broken record. Um, comp plan policies uh, and UDC or UDC uh, standards that you don't believe they're they're complying with. And then the the next one uh, you didn't ask, but I'm glad you asked the last question. The best practices for making a motion. Um, so understand the code requirements. This doesn't mean you need to memorize them. They will be in the staff report right there for you. We will make the findings for you and say how it apply, complies with code. Um, again, all, many many standards typically for a project that are in there. Um, Caleb. Yep. Just with the last slide, and you may have said it, but could you maybe just confirm it for me that <clears throat> we do get a lot of people come in and talk and out and, and um, make comment or public testimony about parking effect on schools and various things. Is it fair to say that those wouldn't? get to us if they already hadn't been vetted, like you said, that extra car, that extra student. I, I, I hear, and I kind of take off of Andy's lead because he's been around so long and, and knows it well, that we'll, we'll often come back and say, well, we don't have any control over that. That's not why, that's not a consideration we can use. I, my question is, is how, how do I know that? <laughs> when, um, yeah. Sorry. Is, so I was just asking, is it fair to conclude or, or presume that that stuff has already been vetted before it gets to us? What I think is fair is to ask that question. Okay. Because um, sometimes it has, maybe sometimes it hasn't. Typically, though, in the staff report, our staff does a pretty good job, and I'm proud of the analysis they do. So if you're hearing that from staff, then I think that's a pretty safe assumption. Um, as a general rule, yeah, uh, you know, again, other jurisdictions have um, authority over some elements. Traffic, right? I mean, that's not one that we uh, ultimately control any of the right of way in Meridian and don't necessarily have, I don't want to say a say because we do have a say. And again, depending on the discretion, you can put a lot more weight on, on something there to say, okay, well, we, we see ACHD's analysis and staff report the same time I drive that I know what that looks like today and I'm not comfortable with this being there it's not in the best interest of the city because today this is not going to generate the staff report now when this road gets widened to five lanes or that intersections improved or this changes maybe maybe it is in the city's best interest but right now so you have a little more discretion that way to question or call on and t but again tie that back then to some of our comp plan policies um, I'm, and again, I would just go back to my first kind of, not cop-out answer, but it's fair to ask those questions. Hey, is this something we can question or condition? And and legal staff, or myself, you know, say, hey, you know, we'd recommend, you know, maybe don't go there with this one. Or, yep, it's been vetted. The facts are the facts. Here here it is. Um, again, I, I, without a true situation right in front of me, it's hard for me to give you any more direction than that. But I think oh, that's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. Um, ask staff. Be comfortable in that anyways. Um, and we won't put you on the on the uh, the tip of the spear to respond back to applicants necessarily. If you ask the question of staff, then we can tell them, hey, nope, ACHD's got jurisdiction over that road. The city really doesn't have any authority to close that off or to whatever. So I think you, it's fair for you to put that back on. Ask the question, maybe even know the answer, but ask the question of staff, and we can be out in front of it for you. Yeah. And we've been doing that more and more, I think. I know I have just... Again, because we hear so much of this that comes through that, you know, over and over that it, sometimes it's better to ask staff and then you, you guys give an answer that's more robust <laughs> than what we can. So 
you know, and it's and it's based literally on on fact, you know, on the facts in front of them. A few times too, we've like I'll ask Kurt to define what our role in chambers is. Yeah. We know what our role is, but I having that saying out loud, especially for everybody else. A big crowd, mm -hmm. then they can understand yep. what our abilities and our limitations are. And hearing it from legal makes a, a bigger impact than necessarily those of us sitting up here on, on top. So, um, I, I think that's helpful because a lot of times I'll ask you, you know, what is our purpose today and what are we voting on? And so when everybody comes up and complains about the roads, then they know that we're not talking about the roads. We're talking about a conditional use permit or, you know, making a recommendation to city council. And so I think that's been helpful to kind of define our limitations as well. There are limitations. I will just say again, a conditional use permit and roads. There are some things, if traffic is still a concern, you can even add some conditions, for example, you know, for the applicant to go and work with ACHD on potential traffic calming measures, right? Hey, see if ACHD will let you put some speed humps in or a roundabout or a chicane or something that mitigates some of the concerns you're hearing about. I think that's fair. You want to be a little bit careful and just condition that, say, go put speed humps out. Right. Because ACHD may not allow or want those speed humps, but you can, you can add a condition that says, go to ACHD, provide proof you've talked to them about potentially adding speed humps, and, and that's it, right? So then at least they at least have to have that conversation and, and you're concerned about it and that's clear with the applicant. So there's, again, there's, it's a gray area. You can talk about roads. You just can't require a lot of things when it comes to roads or schools. <laughs> Outright require. <laughs> it seems like a, um, so several of the applications that have come through have concerns, which is one of the, the things the city wants to do is that connectivity you know, to be able to get from one subdivision and kind of meander your way through another. And then they complain that, well, that, you know, creates too much traffic for us or we already have too much traffic, but that has nothing really to do with the applicant. Yeah. So that becomes, you know, you, you want to be sympathetic to their, their needs and their challenges of, of where they have and they, they've been there, but not all understanding all the nuances of what the city wants as far as connectivity too it becomes challenging. So I know we're at time, but I will just let you know that we talked just for a couple minutes and Commissioner Archer, you were on the call. We do plan on coming back here in the spring-ish time and talk a little bit more about ACHD and traffic and roads and process a little bit more. So some of the things, I know that you used that as an example, that wasn't necessarily your point. But even to just make sure you're on the, on, on the understanding of how that process works with ACHD and kind of what's on the table and what isn't, how TISs work, um, you know, peek behind the curtain a little bit about how that relationship works. So we'll get somebody from ACHD to hopefully come and co-present with us some of those things and you can ask them the hard questions and understand that for the, the future project. So, okay. um, Mr. Chair, if it's okay, we'll have uh, just a couple more minutes. I really wanted to break now, but... Um, and you tell me, I'll send this PowerPoint to you, maybe with some other notes on the last few slides. I do want to give Kurt a couple of minutes at least to, to touch on his slide. Um, Absolutely. But I'll plan on, on sending you the, the few slides of mine that we didn't get to. Okay, appreciate that. Kurt, go ahead. I don't hear you on the microphone, but I hear you. Let's try it again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll, I'll be brief as well with the time limitation. And so Caleb will send this slide to you. You can take a, an actual read of the text and the verbiage there. I think will be helpful to you. I'm going to do the, the high-level executive summary, but I thought it'd be helpful to spend a minute or two just talking about some of the legal requirements that you know, the commission is subject to and, importantly, when decisions are challenged and we have a petition for judicial review and we're in front of a judge what the courts are looking at as well, because that all comes back to your decision-making process and how you went about your decision to approve or to deny a project. So I'm not gonna read through all this material tonight. I'll summarize, but I would encourage you to take a read of this when you have an opportunity, and maybe we'll have an opportunity to, to talk again at a future training session as well. So just very briefly, you're, uh, you are somewhat aware, may recall from your orientation and from other discussions here in chambers, but the framework that we operate under is oftentimes referred to as LUPA, 
as a local land use planning act. And so that provides the legal framework for essentially everything we do and that you do as a commission. And particularly when you are the decision making body uh, and the best example of that is for conditional use permits. So the, the few points I'm just gonna make here this evening and I'll do it quickly is with regard to that, that first section of code and I, the number doesn't really matter, but a couple important points there is that one, we are required by law to have explicit standards that says, here are the standards we're gonna use, applicant, when you come to us and you want to do XYZ project, here are the standards that are gonna apply and how we're gonna evaluate your project. So we don't make it up on the fly and we, don't, we try to avoid gray areas. And the idea is the legislature's been very clear that they wanna provide you know, a, as much certainty to the applicant and to the property owner as they can and also for the for the commission and for the city council so that um, people know what, it, they know in advance what it is going to take to get my project approved or what might be some of the stumbling blocks. And so I think you know, our code does a good job, the UDC does a good job of setting, setting forth those standards. Our planners do a great job in their staff reports of trying to highlight those standards and where there might be deficiencies. And so it's important for the commission as you make your decisions to be mindful of those standards as well. And as, you know, Caleb said that in, his, in a different way earlier in his presentation, but the, the message I guess I want to deliver is that we're required by law to have explicit standards and we need to adhere to those standards. We can't deviate from them or create new standards on the fly. So that's kind of that first section of code that is highlighted there. The second um, section of code there talks about and I think particularly with regard to denials, this applies to approvals as well, but particularly with denials, it's important to have a reasoned statement, is the, the term of art used in LUPA, to describe why we are saying no to a project. So again, we can't be arbitrary and we can't be capricious. We need to have reasons for uh, those decisions. And that starts with, here are the standards, X, Y, and Z, and here's why this project does or does not meet those standards. And then we need to have, ex to be able to explain, you know, initially at the, on the dais and then ultimately in writing with your findings um, to explain the rationale behind the decision. The standards were X, the project doesn't meet those standards because therefore we're denying this project. And so that's what a judge is going to look at if we have a, a decision that is challenged. Uh, if we don't follow that process, by explicitly in LUPA, that is grounds for the courts to invalidate your decision and it comes back and we start from square one again. So, you know, the, the penalty is harsh in the sense that if we don't follow the rules set out in LUPA, um, number one, we're probably gonna pay attorney's fees to the applicant that sued us and then we're gonna go through the whole process all again. So it's important that we have that kind of spell out the standards, our thought process, the facts we relied upon and why, and then the rationale to get to that decision. In that last section there, uh, I wanna just highlight, it essentially says much of what I just described, but I wanna highlight that very last item there, sub C, and Caleb talked about this as well. This is one, this is a self-critique, I'm gonna say from planning staff and legal staff, we could do a better job in this area, and I'd like to encourage you to do a better job also, is that we really ought not just to say, your project is denied, and then period. Really what the law requires is, if there's any way that that project could be approved, we need to give direction to the applicant that says, we can't approve your project as you presented it because, and have our standards and our facts and our conclusion, but we ought to be able to finish that thought and say, but, if you did this or this or this, we could approve it or here's some ideas for you. Now there are gonna be some situations where there, there just is no way to approve it and that's okay. So the, the LUPA does have a provision that says if you, if you can't get there, you can't get there. But um, I think we all can do collectively, we all as a city team, including the commission, can probably do a better job in that area that says, instead of just saying denial, it's we can't approve your project, we're denying this project under these, uh, your proposal because but here are some things you could do that would allow us to say yes. Um, I think I'll leave it at that for this evening in the interest of time, but um, we'll probably have an opportunity to have that discussion again at a future training session, and I do encourage you to read the text that was uh, bolded here when uh, Caleb has the opportunity to distribute the material to you. Could I be uh, nervous to do that because if we said, okay, if you do A, B, and C, and then they do A, B, and C, and they come back, and we deny it again for whatever other reasons, Feel like we're kind of saying you know like for a height restriction all right if you take off you know 10 feet 
come back again and we'll approve it. We're not really experts in that. Yeah, Commissioner Lorcher, I think that's a fair point. And so I think you can ask staff number one to assist you with, with some of that direction to the applicant. If the commission has general concerns, but you'd like staff to help articulate in more detail what would be required for approval, that would be an option. I think it's also fine to, instead of getting that specific about we need to, you know, 10, you need to reduce your height by 10 feet, it could be you need to reduce your height to comply with section XYZ of our unified uh, development code. So you can leave it more open and generic to say you just need to change your height to better comply with our code. And that would be sufficient as well. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So that was um, that was our presentation. Um, I will. I do have just one more. You don't have any time for, for Q&A. Um, but I will just uh, r request that uh, kind of what we talked about this evening, help us help you help us. <laughs> Um, you know, we do update the findings with your action. So the more you can give us on why you're approving or denying something, we can then document and type it in. And I know sometimes we'll interrupt and say, hey, I didn't quite understand what, what you wanted. So if you can even look our direction sometimes and say, hey, do you understand what we're doing here? Does, is the motion clear? Do you understand why we're approving this or denying it or that condition because of this? That way we can create that record that really reflects your action. Because that's on us. That's what we do. We go back through the minutes and make sure we're capturing what you did. So if you can help us with the, yeah, we, we're denying it because the applicant's shoes are pink and we don't like pink. If that's what you're doing, it, that's clear. I wouldn't recommend you do that. But I'm, I'm just saying give us the reasons so we can document them because um, that is on us um, to do. So you approve them. They're on your consent agenda. Um, but even some of the things that get recommended to council. So um, again, Mr. Chair, I appreciate the time this evening. We'll follow up. I'll send this, do some more training, conversing in the future. But I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you very much. You. Appreciate it. Um, with that, we'll take a quick break just so we can restart, reset. Oh, I feel my microphone. Uh, I would recommend, I think we, the clerk can refresh my memory. I think we have actually, this agenda stands on its own, so we probably should, we need to adjourn this meeting, and okay. then you, when the time is correct, you can open your regular 6 p.m. meeting. Okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. And moved and second to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. We'll get ready for the regular session.
Good evening. Welcome to the Planning and Zoning <clears throat> Commission meeting for December 15th, 2022. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. The commissioners who are present in this evening's meeting are at City Hall and on Zoom. We also have staff from the city attorney and clerk's offices, as well as the city planning department. If you're joining on Zoom this evening, we can see that you are here. You may observe the meeting. <clears throat> However, your ability to be seen on screen and talk will be muted. During the public testimony portion of the meeting, you will be unmuted and then be able to comment. Please note that we cannot take questions until the public testimony portion. <clears throat> if you have a process question during the meeting, please email cityclerk at meridiancity.org and they will re reply as quickly as possible. If you simply want to watch the meeting, we encourage you to watch this streaming on the city's YouTube channel. You can access that at meridiancity.org slash live. Um, with that, let's begin with the roll call. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Stoddard. Commissioner Stoddard. Commissioner Grace. Here. Commissioner Lorcher. Here. Commissioner Yearsley. Commissioner Yearsley. Commissioner Seal. Here. Absent are Commissioner Wheeler, Commissioner Stoddard, and Commissioner Yearsley, but he is signed in as present. I don't know. Okay. Uh, we should probably take a minute to figure out why Commissioner Yearsley isn't responding. Uh, that's a possibility. They may not be able to hear us. She did, yep. Earlier, Commissioner Stoddard heard us, so. Do you want to move Commissioner Lorcher over as a panelist? Um, do we have Commissioner Yearsley's cell phone number? I am here, sorry. Oh. I stepped away from my desk. We gotcha. And Madam Clerk, I think I recall hearing you say that, that Commissioner Stoddard was available for training, but not for the regular meeting, correct? So I think we do just have you four, are correct. four commissioners. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we will count Commissioner Yearsley as present then. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'm also oh, getting confirmation that we're not streaming the meeting either. So if you, we're not streaming the meeting online, so you may want to turn that on as well. Thank you. Is it the YouTube that's not being seen? Okay. Okay. Um, with that, the first item on the agenda is, is the adoption of the agenda. Um, files number H2022-0077 for Dutch Bros Eustick and Eagle. H2022-0013 for Promenade Cottages Subdivision and H2022-0073 um, for Meridian Oz OZ Apartments will be open for the sole purpose of continuing to a regularly scheduled meeting. They will only open for that purpose, so if there's anybody here tonight to testify for those applications, we will not be taking testimony on them. Um, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? Mr. Chairman, so moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, no opposed. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda, consent agenda, and we only have one item on the agenda, which is to approve the minutes um, of the December 1st, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Can I get a motion to accept the con consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 None opposed, motion carries. Um, now I'll take a minute here to explain the public hearing process. Um, we will open each item individually and we will begin with the staff report. Staff will report their findings on how the item adheres to our comprehensive plan and 
development code. After staff has made their presentation, the applicant will come forward to present their case and respond to staff comments. They will <clears throat> have 15 minutes to do so. After the applicant is finished, we will open the floor to public testimony. Each person will be called on only once during the public testimony. The clerk will call names individually of those who have signed up on our website in advance to testify. You will then be unmuted in Zoom or you can come to the microphone in chambers. You need to state your name and address for the record and you will have three minutes to address the commission. If you have previously sent pictures or a presentation for the meeting, it will be displayed on the screen. If you have established that you are speaking on behalf of a larger group like an HOA where others from that group will allow you to speak on their behalf, you will have up to 10 minutes. After all those who have signed up in advance <clears throat> have spoken, we will invite any others who may wish to testify. If you wish to speak on the topic, you may come forward in chambers or if um, on Zoom, press the raise hand button in the Zoom app. Or if you are listening on a phone, please press star nine and wait for your name to be called. If you're listening on multiple devices, such as a computer and a phone, please be sure to mute those extra devices so we do not experience feedback. We can hear you clearly. When you're finished, if the commission does not have questions for you, you will return to your seat in chambers or be muted on Zoom and you will no longer have the ability to speak. And please remember, we generally do not call you back up a second time. After all testimony has been heard, the applicant will be given another 10 minutes to come back and respond. When the applicant is finished responding to questions and concerns, we will close the public hearing. The commissioners will have the opportunity to discuss and hopefully be able to make final decisions and recommendations to city council as needed. So at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing for item number H2022-0077 um, for continuance to January 5th um, to allow for correction of the noticing error. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Lurcher, go ahead. I move that application or item number H2022-0077 um, be continued to January 5th. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to continue item number H2022-0077 to January 5th. All in favor, please say aye. 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 No opposed, motion carries. Okay, I would like to open public hearing number H2022-0013 for Promenade Cottages subdivision um, for continuance to January 19th to allow the applicant more time to provide staff with additional documentation. Mr. Chairman. Go right ahead. I move that we continue file number H-2022-0013 to our January 19, 2023 meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to continue item H-2022-0013 to January 19th. All in favor, please say aye. 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 None opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> All right, at this time I'd like to open H2022-0073 for Meridian OZ Apartments uh, for continuation of January 19th um, to work with staff on revisions to the development plan. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Lorcher, go ahead. I'm, I move that application H2022-0073 be um, continued to January 19th. Second. It's been moved and seconded to continue file number H2022-0073 to January 19th. All in favor, please say aye. 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 None opposed, motion carries. Okay. Now for the real stuff. <laughs> this time I'd like to open file number H2022-0081 for Guthrie's drive through and we will begin with staff report. Good evening, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Um, the applicant is here to discuss their project or present their project for Guthrie's drive through which is a conditional use permit. The site consists of 0 0.96 or 0 0.69 acres of land, zone CC, located at 1840 West Chinden Boulevard. Um, the history on the property, the most recent is in 2015, the commission approved a conditional use permit for a Carl's Jr. that has since expired at that location. Um, the comprehensive plan flume designation is mixed use community. And a restaurant is a principally permitted use in the CC zoning district. A conditional use permit is required for a drive through establishment within 300 feet of another drive through facility, residential district, and existing residents. 
The applicant proposes to construct a 2,083 square foot restaurant with a drive through for a Guthrie's, which will contribute to the mix of uses in the area and provide another fast food option to area re residents within close proximity to nearby residential development. There are specific use standards in the UDC that apply to both restaurants and drive through use. Um, parking is required. Restaurant uses at one space for every 250 square feet of gross floor area. A minimum of eight spaces are required for this particular project and a total of 25 spaces are proposed, exceeding the UDC minimums. Um, access is provided from the shared driveway to the east proposed, or from the property to the east proposed from a driveway along the northern um, boundary of the site and on the east along West Island, or the northern boundary along West Island Green Drive and the private drive, sorry, on the, located on the east side of the property. Direct access to Chinden Boulevard is prohibited. Um, a drive-through use also requires the applicant to demonstrate safe pedestrian and vehicle access circulation and between adjacent properties. Um, site safe pedestrian access should be provided from the vehicle stacking lanes areas around the drive through on the site. One is required from the perimeter sidewalk along Chinden to the main building entrance. Staff recommends additional pe um, pedestrian accesses to the building along the south of side of the drive aisle per UDC 11-3A-19B-4 and a striped pedestrian walkway on the northeast of the site directing patrons to the building entrance. Um, staff recommends signage be installed ahead of each crossing, warning drivers to watch out for pedestrians. Staff finds that the parking stalls to the north um, should be restricted for employee parking only to maximize pedestrian safety. The applicant has submitted a revised, um, whoops, a revised site plan that demonstrates a better pedestrian circulation from the site plan that differs from staff's. So staff's is on the left and the applicant's proposed is on the right. Um, staff supports the changes as the proposed by the applicant and staff recommends a modification in addition um, to the um, condition in the staff report under section seven a planning to see to reflect the pedestrian walkway changes. Um, the site plan also shows the stacking lane is a separate lane from the drive aisles and parking, which provides access to the rest of the development. The proposed site layout places a drive through that starts at the northeast um, portion of corner of the site of the building and goes all the way around that with exits at the northeast corner and west side of the building. Also shows the pickup window on the west side of the proposed restaurant. Um, street buffer landscaping was with installed um, along Chinden Boulevard with the Chinden and Linder Crossing subdivision improvements and that must be re um, remain and be protected during construction on the site in accordance with UDC 11-3B10C3. Um, conceptual building elevations were submitted for a single story building that incorporates a mix of materials consisting of ephus, brick, veneer, metal awnings, metal um, coping, downspouts, windows, and metal roofing. The final design of the structure is required to comply with the design standards listed in the architectural standards manual. Um, we had a written test a petition signed by numerous neighbors that live within the Spur Wing or Spur Wing Challenge subdivision. Um, this was included as part of the public rec record under public comments. And the primary concern is with the excess traffic due to another restaurant with a drive-through that will bring to the neighborhood. And staff recommendation for this project is approval with the conditions listed in the staff report. Um, with the modification as requested by the applicant and staff will also need a motion of approval to change the condition in the staff report. Thank you, that concludes the presentation. Thank you very much. Would the applicant like to come forward?
Good evening, sir. We'll just need your name and address for the record, and the floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you, Chair and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Connor Candrian, 1100 West Idaho Street, Boise, Idaho. Um, can I see the presentation from this one? Madam Chair, could you pause the clock, please? Thank you. There we go. And am, I able, and am I able to control it from here? Oh, gotcha. Cool. All right, like I said, thank you, commissioners and chair, for uh, allowing me to present. I'm here to present on behalf of, behalf of Guthrie's for the drive through restaurant, CUP. Uh, here is the applicant team, myself, Lauren Pitcher, and Nicolette Womack, all with Kimley Horn. Uh, the timeline for the project, we had a pre-op meeting in September, uh, hosted a neighborhood meeting in October, uh, submitted an application for the CUP in October, and uh, here we are tonight at the PNZ hearing. Uh, here's a vicinity map for the project. As mentioned, this is a 0.96 acre site. Uh, it's currently a vacant lot. The future land use map is a mixed use community. The zoning map is zoned as community business. This is the site plan that was submitted with the CUP application. And then the updated site plan that uh, Stacy had presented on uh, that addresses the conditions set forth. Uh, the proposed landscape plan conceptual elevations. And just to recap the staff report, uh, mechanical equipment trash enclosure must be screened, pedestrian access and materials need to be looked at, adding additional signage, uh, existing and proposed landscaping requirements, adding a bicycle rack, and then the business hours restricted to 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. and no direct access to Chinden. Uh, we have reviewed the staff report and uh, are in agreement with all the conditions. Our requested action is for approval of the conditional use permit. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, do we have any questions for the staff or applicant? Mr. Chairman, I have a question for staff. Go ahead, um, Commissioner Grace. You mentioned there was a petition that was available in the packet. I was just having some trouble locating that. Is, could someone direct me to where I might find? It's in the public testimony portion. I usually can find that, but it's. Was I missing something here? I just, I just wanted to take a peek at that petition. And see. So here's the. So that's the agenda I don't have. It's on the website. Don't let me hold you up. Okay, I was going to say if we, if, we, if, there, if there's a question coming out of it, we'll we'll get it here in a little while. So, okay, um, okay if there's no questions, um, we'll go ahead and have you take a seat, and we'll open up the public testimony portion. Madam Clerk. Yes, and we have several signed up, and they had a particular order that they wanted to speak in. So, whoever wanted to speak first, please come up. Commission, 
Um, can I ask, this is the first time I've done this, can I ask questions before I start? Uh, yeah, we'll need your name and address for the record, please, and then um, you, you can ask questions, but if this isn't a back and forth dialogue, so. Understood, okay. it, it just would change my, my discussion. First, uh, my name is Ron Callison. Uh, my address is 2066 West Three Lakes Drive. Please speak into the microphone as well. Sorry. No. Uh, Ron Callison. My address is 2066 West Three Lakes Drive, and that connects directly to Island Green that, that connects to the development. Good. I, I just had one question. I was wondering, I couldn't find it in any of the materials. Was there any kind of traffic study done around the volume of traffic coming in or out of this particular development? And is that available to citizens? Well, I was going to say, I'll probably refer to staff, but my, my answer is going to be that the, the traffic study that was done for this, because there was a previous CMP that was approved for this area, is, was probably not required. But that's, okay. I'll, I'll let staff authoritatively respond to that. <laughs> Mr. Chair and Commissioners, mm -hmm. um, there was not a required traffic study for this project. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so... As I said, my name's Ron Callison. I am one of the members of the Spurring Challenge Homeowners Association. I'm not the only one that wants to speak, um, but I, I am part of that 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 homeowners association and wanted to wanted to speak tonight. Um, I'm speaking because I have serious concerns about the traffic safety problem within our neighborhood, and I'm opposed to making it even worse by adding yet another high volume restaurant without considering the impact to our specific neighborhood. And if I can direct your attention to um, our neighborhood on the screen, it's outlined in red. Island Green comes out, of the, comes out of the commercial development and connects to West Three Lakes Road where I'm a, where I am a, I'm a resident. That, if I can just describe that to you briefly, that is a 17, uh, 17 property neighborhood. There's four houses in the cul-de-sac that are kind of tucked away. There's 13 on, on Three Lakes Drive specifically. And it's roughly a thousand feet long. It's two and a half football fields long. And it is, um, the neighbors, the, the, the folks in the, in, the, um, in the community have children, uh, they have grandchildren, um, some of them have uh, elder parents that all are active in that in our particular neighborhood, and what we're seeing uh, what we're seeing in that neighborhood is that what we would think would be a standard, normal, pleasant, um, you know, one street one street neighborhood with no existing streets coming in from the sides, no existing traffic. Um, we thought it would be a very nice, pleasant neighborhood, and, and it's not, and it's not safe. And the reason we don't believe it's safe is, I'm done at three minutes. If you could wrap up, please. Pardon me? If you could wrap up, please, yes, sir. Wow, okay. So what's happened is with Chinden and that commercial development, we are the path of least resistance. We're a connector or a collector road where people come traveling eastbound come in off Long Lake, come speeding through our neighborhood and are easily in that development without having to stop at any lights. Likewise, to get out of the development, they come out through our neighborhood, they don't use the other access points, they speed through our neighborhood unimpeded, they go out Long Lake, right-hand turn on Chinden, and they're free to go west. And that is the core, that's the core of our problem. We'd like to, we'd like to suggest that you not approve this and we're not against development, and we're not necessarily against Guthrie's, but we are against people getting hurt, um, potentially killed in our neighborhood with the amount of traffic and the speed of traffic in the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Quick, quick question, sure. and staff, you might be able to help with this: Is that are those ACHD roads in the subdivision, or are those private roads? Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, those are dedicated right-of-ways. They're ACHD roads. Okay. Except for the north-south portion of the, the, along the west boundary of the gun theory site, that is a private connection to Chin in there. But everything else is, is a, a platted street. Okay, and I'll, because I would imagine there's gonna be several more people that are gonna probably come up and, and 
speak to the speak to traffic. Um, unfortunately, if the roads are owned by ACHD and ACHD says that it's okay, that limits us as to having any ability to take action on that. So, uh, unfortunately, ACHD is the they're the people that control the roads. They, they own that road space, and um, the report that they wrote for us showed that uh, indicated that by their standards, it's acceptable. But that wasn't recent, right? That was when this was started to develop. Could we possibly, I mean, can this committee, commission make a recommendation that they look at that again because of the increases in volume? Like we're seeing up to 3,000 cars a day go through our neighborhood. Uh, understood, and we're all a little frustrated with that, <laughs> the amount of traffic that we're seeing. But at this point, I would say we, we are likely not able to do that. So you couldn't make a recommendation to ACHD to look into this? We'd have to do that. Correct. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. I'm clear. Thank you. You're going to hear it again. Oh, ma'am, we need your name and address, please. Yes, please. Uh, Terry Fronmeyer, 2102 West Three Lakes Drive, Meridian. As stated earlier, our neighborhood in Spurwing Challenge Estates has a real safety issue with the increase in fast-moving traffic utilizing our residential, residential streets as an access to the commercial center and from traffic just cutting through our neighborhood to avoid traffic lights. I was one of the near misses on West Island Green Road utilizing the golf cart crossing. I was nearly T-boned. Shook me up horribly. We've noticed a considerable increase in traffic and speed just over the past two years. Our neighborhood families with children and pets are very concerned with children biking and even walking on the sidewalks. It is a common hot topic discussed by our neighbors. These issues are not manufactured by our neighborhood. During the 2014 entitlement land use process for the Chinden and Linder Crossing, various concerns were identified and memorialized. Number one, regarding West Green Drive, ACHD conditioned the developer to construct traffic calming within the roadway west of the private drive. Per ACHD, this was in order to reduce speeding vehicles traveling through the, traveling through the Spurwing subdivision. Number two, Meridian City Council was concerned about cut through traffic with the development of the commercial property. Staff was to ensure traffic calming was incorporated into the street design. Number three, the public hearing August 14, 2014, a key issue of discussion by City Council was limiting the location of any fast food restaurant to minimize impact to the adjacent residents. At that time, Comp Plan Policy 3.06.15 was applicable and recognized for this 2014 development. The policy stated, protect existing residential properties from incompatible land use development on adjacent parcels. The 2014 mitigation, mitigation effort, the traffic cal calming element, has had absolutely no effect on the volume and speed of the vehicles entering our neighborhood. The impact of these the issues today has magnified beyond anyone's anticipation back in 2014. As a result, our neighborhood safety is extremely compromised and our livability and quality of life is diminishing. diminishing. Retail often and office and industrial services are an integral part of any community. In my work experience, well-planned commercial developments were encouraged, promoted, and welcomed by communities. However, and this is a big however, Residential properties had priority, the neighborhoods were protected, and the neighborhoods had standing, especially when it came to traffic impact. Our neighborhood wants standing. We live here, these are our homes. So in closing, I object to the Planning and Zoning Commission approving this conditional use permit. Please allow our neighborhood time to engage with the appropriate authorities to address our issues and find solutions before this permit is approved. The additional high volume traffic generated by the applicant's use will only compound our ongoing safety and livability issues. And I thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Commissioner Grace. Mr. Chairman, just a quick question, if, if you know, Terry. Yes. Um, do you, what represents the, the largest portion of the cars going through? Is it people cutting through or is it people using those commercial establishments? Again, if you know. I don't, excuse me, I don't know for sure. We've watched, and you, you have a, plenty of cars cutting through, coming south on, um, on uh, Linder, taking a quick right, and they'll, they'll hit, the, hit that private road and then connect on Chinden again just to miss the, the, the light. 
but a lot of them will turn right and head right down our neighborhood. But a lot of people also coming from uh, the west side, they cut in Long Lake Way, drive down our, our, our street into the center, whether it's the liquor store, the car wash. We're not opposed to, to commercial. Uh, I was a commercial broker for 20, uh, 35 years, and, but I've never seen anything like this, where the, the consideration of downstream on these, connect, these connecting streets, because that's what I've read, connecting, but the downstream is just, we're, we are really getting hammered. And I'm really f afraid that someone eventually is going to get killed. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you much. Who would like to come up next? <laughs> Evening, sir. We'll need your name and address, please. Oh, sure thing. I'm uh, William Frommeyer. And I live at 2102 West Three Lakes Drive. Uh, having kind of observed what's going on here, uh, I've, the rapid growth uh, for the city of Meridian in the past few years clearly it was not anticipated when the planning decisions were made relative to the Spurwing Challenge Estates and the Chin, Chinder, Chinden and Linder Crossing Center in 2012, 13, and 14. In retrospect, Connecting a neighborhood local street to a commercial center was a poor decision, which added little value to the commercial center as it already had two access streets. As a result, our neighborhood streets, three, West Three Lakes Drive and West Island Green, now operate as high traffic commercial collector streets. And I've also become aware, become aware of the what we call the shortcut traffic which is originating in East and West Ada County and Canyon County, who want to avoid two traffic lights. The traffic light at Chinden and Linder, and the second one at Chinden and Long Lake Drive, Long Lake Way. In the afternoon, it's amazing if you go up and sit in the, in the, in the commercial center at the number of vehicles traveling from the Eagle area on Linder who turn off onto Inst Island Green Drive through the commercial center and then proceed through our neighborhood to rejoin Chinder at Long Lake Way. Many times, uh, or many of them also turn onto the private street east of the primary uh, health clinic to get back on, on southbound or westbound on Chinden. Uh, a move to avoid the uh, traffic light at, uh, again, it's a move to avoid the traffic light at Chinden and Linder. Clearly, those who are not uh, to turn onto the private load, road have not yet found out that by driving through our neighborhood, they can basically avoid both traffic lights. I assume that as, as the uh, Guthrie's is approved and you have a thousand more cars per day using the center, the commercial center, a bunch of them are gonna come down our way and pretty soon everybody's gonna find out the way to avoid the lights is to basically drive through our neighborhood. Um, now, the Chinden and Linder Crossing Center already has a high level of auto-oriented use. 75% of the businesses, including Guthrie's, are included in that 75% if, if Guthrie's goes through. And before the, condition, the, is, the Guthrie's conditional use is approved, I guess what we're looking for is that we need to some corrective action to basically keep from devastating, or traffic devastating our neighborhood as it already has. And I guess we support growth of new commercial businesses, but not when it contributes to the demise of the quality of life, livability, and the safety in our neighborhood, Spurwing Challenge Estates. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Any questions from commissioners? Okay. Thank Thanks. You, Good evening, sir. Need name and address, please. Good evening. Uh, my name's Neil Stewart. Um, uh, I live at uh, 2148 West Three Lakes Drive with my wife. Uh, we are longtime Meridian residents. Um, in fact, we both attended elementary school just right down the street over here. Um, Teresa and I are concerned, and you've been hearing that from everyone regarding that, the traffic and the speed and so forth. And so we have those same concerns. For us, it's more of a personal issue because of grandchildren. Um, our children come over with our grandchildren. Um, when they do park on the street, just exiting and 
children out of the cars and car seats and so forth is, is really a concern. So, um, and I'm hearing you, you that you know the, the safety issue and the, and the traffic issue may be, you know, an Ada County Highway District concern. But anyway, we're voicing it anyway. So, um, one thing that I would like to uh, to bring up is it's quite interesting is that if you're coming from the west on Chinden and uh, through a Google Maps, um, say you're coming from Costco, let's say, and you, you Google Map to go to Primary Health, and then you would also, bring, Guthrie's would be right similar to that. The actual uh, mapping of that takes you left on Long Lake, down West Three Lakes Drive, and into Primary Health, and then we'll, most likely will be the same thing going into um, into Guthrie's versus the three or four minutes longer to go all the way up to the Linder intersection, head head north on Linder, and then take the uh, enter on the east side of that uh, of the commercial development. Um, anyway, our our grandchildren are three to eleven years old, and whether you know if they're riding, you know, small toys or or bikes or whatever, you know, we're concerned with them on the sidewalk and, and, the, and the lower part of our driveway, and that's a, a big concern for us. Um, as you've heard, our street is being used as more of a thoroughfare, you know, as identified by even through the Google Map, mapping of how to get, you know, to, to the commercial development. Um, as stated earlier, it's affecting our livability and, um, you know, um, Teresa and I, my wife, respectfully request that these concerns be heard in uh, making this determination. Thank you. Thank you very much. What? See one left over there, ma'am, no? <laughs> okay. I have um, no one else signed up. Okay, it looks like Chris online is raising his hand. Hi, Commissioner Steele. This is Chris Johnson, City Clerk. I um, just sent a message. YouTube is not running, so I just wanted to point that out so um, the clerk can get that running for those who may be watching from home. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Joy, do you want to take a, should we take a quick break so we can get that? Okay. We'll take about a five minute break here and see if we can get that to, to work and Generally, we don't do this in the middle, <laughs> but we will make an exception this time. Thank you.
All right, we'll go ahead and reconvene. And since Chris was our <laughs> the last person um, for public testimony, unless anybody else, and there's nobody new in here, uh, nobody else online raising their hand, so the applicant like to come back up. But, but before you start, I'll, I'll talk to it a little bit because um, the, the traffic considerations that are here are, um, we as a city um, don't always agree with what we get from ACHD, but they do own the roads, they are the authority on it. Um, so unfortunately, we have to, if they, being the authority, tell us that those roads can handle this, we have to abide by that. So. With that, I'll let the applicant <laughs> please come up and present any additional information that you would like. Yeah, I would just like to add that uh, we do hear the concern, but as uh, the commissioners and staff have said, you know, ACHD did not recommend a, a traffic study for this development, um, but we hear the concern. I'm a, I'm a new father, so I, I, I feel that, you know, I'd be concerned about my, my kid's safety too with cut through traffic, but unfortunately, uh, we were not required to do a, a TIS report. Um, from a design perspective on the site, uh, as it pertains to traffic, the access uh, to the east is existing and the access to the west that we are proposing is aligned with the primary health access. Uh, we felt that this was the, the best case scenario we could design our accesses to for the site. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you very much. I get a motion to close the public hearing for file number H2022-0081. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing for file number H2022-0081. All in favor, please say aye. 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 None opposed, motion carries. Who would like to go first? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Yearsley, please go ahead. So uh, the only action that we have today is to approve or disapprove the drive-through. That's really our, our, our action. The uh, restaurant itself is a per principal permitted use. Um, I, I do understand the homeowner's frustration about uh, traffic, um, but I don't know the way it sounds to me, it's not related to this facility. Um, and my recommendation would be to reach out to ACHD. Um, I know in our subdivision, we've had similar instances where we've had high speed traffic and they've come out and done studies and, and have identified traffic calming measures to help, um, you know, try to minimize traffic or slow traffic down. A couple of things that they've done in our subdivision is actually making the uh, the roadway a little narrow in spots to have areas where they make kind of for force traffic to slow down. I would recommend they go this that direction. Um, for this application, I, I can't see their requesting denial has basis on the drive through itself. So um, I, I would stand in favor of the application. Thank you, Commissioner Usley. Anybody else want to throw out their, their thoughts? Mr. Chairman, yeah, I, I tend to agree with Commissioner what Commissioner Yearsley indicated. I, um, as a resident pretty close to that area, um, I'm very sympathetic. I, I deal with the Rocky Mountain traffic in my, in my neighborhood and subdivision routinely, and the drivers are <clears throat> young and inexperienced. Um, so I am sympathetic, but I, I'm also mindful of what is before us, and I can't help but think also that I'm, I'm having a hard time coming up with any other commercial establishment that would be in that location that might not cause or yield the same results So, for the neighborhood. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Lorcher, you have anything to add? Okay, yeah, similarly, I'm in the same place. I sympathize for the situation, but again, um, for the most part, by the time it gets here, if ACHD has given the report that all is well, um, that limits what we can do um, with an application like this. So 
uh, especially where it's a conditional use permit. Um, I mean, th in the property is already in the city um, and, and has been so. Um, I do want to say, if, um, I do appreciate some things that staff has put in there as far as uh, the recommendations that were made um, and then the applicant's um, uh, proposal for the essentially the pedestrian traffic. So um, I live in this area myself. Um, I'm a frequent bike rider, as are my kids, my wife. Um, so we ride to this area for, um, you know, recreation and dining. So it's nice to have that um, kind of as an element to, to the building that's there and to the establishment. So um, I also do, <laughs> ironically, I live in a subdivision where I have just the opposite problem with traffic. So um, I live by a golf course. And so we have a lot more people going to that golf course and we have a similar problem where we're seeing just the influx of people cause enough of a rise in there that it's causing a lot more traffic in our subdivision. So unfortunately it exists everywhere. Um, you're not alone in that. Um, and with that, I would be more than happy to hear a motion. Mr. Chairman, after considering all staff, applicant, and public testimony, I move to approve file number H-2022-0081 as presented in the staff report, including all staff recommendations for the hearing date of December 15th, 2022. Second. Uh, quick question. Bill, is that enough to cover the condition, or Stacy, is that enough to, enough to con uh, I'm going to be able to talk eventually. Um, the 8A2C. Um, we just need you to state a motion that you are um, accepting or approving the revised change that staff recommended. Oh, okay. Um, we can pull up the slide. Yeah, the revision was to 8A2C. If you want to amend your, your motion. Yes, I'm not following, Mr. Chairman. What's what's the revision to the motion then? It's on the screen. Um, I I would read it, but that would be redundant. <laughs> so you just want me to read this? Um, you can, or some summarize it if you would like. Yeah, Commissioner Grace, you can just say revise the condition A two dot C as as stated and in tonight's presentation and we'll make sure it happens okay so mr mr chairman i would make the same motion i made if i have to make it again i can but the same motion i made which also would include um recommending a revised condition to section 8a2 c as is included in the staff report does the second stand yes okay been moved and seconded to approve file number H2022-0081 um, with the mentioned modifications. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, all, all in favor, so motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, and with that, um, we will open the public hearing for item number H2022-0076 for Key Bank Meridian Branch. And we will begin staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Last item on the agenda this evening is the uh, Key Bank Meridian Branch conditional use permit. The subject property consists of 1.04 acres of land currently zoned CG, and it's located at 3485 West Chinden Boulevard, which is a Lost Rapids subdivision. Um, history on the site, recently City Council just approved a short plat for this property, so the lot that you see here in this graphic isn't the actual configuration of the property. The applicant will be required to record that short plat and create the lot that this particular uh, Development will, will develop on, I should say. 
So here you can see here on this graphic on the left-hand side, you can see where the short plat created two lots. So Key Bank is going on the left lot, lot, one of the lots, and then this is an additional lot that will be created as part of that short plat process, and then we'll come in with a different user at some point in the future. Don't know what that is at this time. I'm uh, just doing some quick math in my head before the he hearing. I think this is the seventh or eighth <laughs> drive-through on this particular property, just to bring that to your attention. Uh, typically, we, you know, as you know, with uh, the pandemic, uh, drive-throughs have become very popular, and so this is one of those instances where we're getting quite a few drive-throughs on the site. So, as uh, back in 2019, I believe I, the comprehensive plan designation for this property was changed to commercial to allow for the development of the Costco Los Rapids property, and so again, this is one of the commercial lots as well. So the applicant is here tonight, or at least online tonight, to discuss with you developing a 3,400 square foot bank branch on the site uh, with the associated drive-through. Uh, the reason for the drive-through is because one, this drive-through is located within 300 feet of an existing drive-through and also located within 300 feet of a residential zoning the district to the west. So they're hitting all the right um, items to require this body to act on this application tonight. I would let you know that this branch will serve the area. So there is another bank branch that was approved and constructed and operating just to the east of this site as well, but it's, a, a di again, a different financial institution. Uh, if you had a chance to look at the staff report, you, you would note that staff did mention that this is required to comply with all UDC standards for drive-through uses, uh, self, uh, trying to think of the ATM. There's an ATM as well, which is self-service uses. Uh, that's a let UDC 113A16. Um, so visibility needs to be part of that, um, and that would be located on the west side here. One of the interesting things about this particular site is when the short plat was approved recently, we did place a condition on the project that access would be from the south. And the reason for that, the reason why we did restrict access, one, Chinden, we don't allow direct lot access to Chinden, but two, this driveway here is a direct connection to Chinden. And we wanted to minimize conflict with residents or cars coming off of Chinden and entering the site. So we had placed that condition to have the shared access come in off the south boundary. Also mentioned to you as part of the subdivision approval, um, this development does have cross access between all the lots within the commercial development. Uh, code does require specific parking standards for this use. The uh, site plan this evening shows 16 parking spaces, which is in excess of co the code requirements. Uh, applicant also submitted a concurrent development, excuse me, a concurrent design review application with this project. As you know, design review applications are reviewed at staff level and, and approved by the director. And so the design that I'm showing you tonight has been approved by staff. And so there is no action for you on that this evening. Uh, looking at the public record, I did not see that any public testimony was provided on this application. I would mention to you that we did receive written testimony from the architect, the applicant, um, and I wanted to also let the commission know that as of five o'clock this evening, I did receive an email from Public Works. There was a condition of approval that I need to have you strike this evening, and that would be uh, Public Works site specific condition number four. It re refers to reimbursement for the street lights along Chinden. That has already been taken care of or paid by Costco when the development was approved. So that condition is no longer necessary as part of the project. So uh, staff is recommending with the conditions in the staff report and with the recommendation that you strike that Public Works condition. With that, I'll conclude my presentation and stand for any questions you may have. Great. Thank you very much, Bill. Looks like the applicant is online. Ben, if you want to go ahead and unmute, the floor is yours. Good evening. Uh, ben Gingrich, I'm with HSB Architects and Engineers representing KeyBank. My address is 1250 Old River Road, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I don't have much to add uh, other than um, the report that was just given by, by staff here. Um, our new bank branch is, is obviously going to serve the community. Um, we put together a nice design here, which we think really emphasizes, um, you know, sort, sort of pedestrian scale here with these canopies. Uh, we're here tonight to go uh, for conditional use on the drive-through, though. Uh, I would try to differentiate ourselves um, as a bank branch. Uh, we're a little different than, you know, similar drive-through uses of uh, 
restaurant use. As a bank branch, we typically see around you know maximum four stacking spaces going into a drive-through. The ATM is the is the lane adjacent to the building, and that's a 24-hour use there. And then our auto teller lane is the next lane. And that has become really um, crucial, especially during um, these sort of pandemic times when people don't want to get out of their car. They want to be able to take care of any kind of bank transaction and speak with a, a member of staff uh, directly from their car. So, you know, I think that the use is appropriate for this district and appropriate for um, this parcel here out in front of Costco. And with that, we. Um, we responded to all the staff comments. The only thing we were um, we were uh, going to look for alternative compliance on was the east property line. Um, the, the comment was that we needed a five foot landscape buffer. We are going to uh, request alternative compliance to utilize um, the same five foot buffer as our, our neighboring property. Um, it's our, our, our civil engineers, um, belief that that's that meets the standard will will um, file any kind of easement that's required to reciprocally uh, maintain that landscape buffer so there would be a five foot buffer between our lot and the next lot uh, and we'll apply for that through the alternative compliance path uh, concurrent to the CCC um, with that I'll I think that's all my comments. Um, pretty straightforward, and, and we're looking for uh, your support this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Appreciate it. Um, since there's nobody else online, sirs, would you like to? There's one person in chambers. Would you like to testify on this? Nope. Okay. With that, and um, oh, I was going to say, commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant or staff? I don't. Okay, that's a no. Um, if there's anything further that the applicant would like to add, otherwise we'll close the public testimony portion. Thank you for all of your time this evening. Great, thank you very much. Okay, at this time I'll take a motion to close the public hearing for file number H2022-0076. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close file number H2022-0076. All in favor, please say aye. 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 None opposed. Public hearing is closed. Um, this one seems to be pretty straightforward, but if anybody has any questions, concerns, or comments, please feel free or a motion. Just a, Mr. Chairman, just a clarification. So mm -hmm. any Mr. motion Grace, that was would be made would be to, <laughs> I can't talk either. Any motion would need to include the removal of the fourth commission condition from public works related to the reimbursement agreement is that accurate yeah as I mean specifically it was strike the site specific um, condition number four is what I heard okay, okay. Um, mr. chairman I'll give it a shot then go right ahead uh, after considering all staff applicant and public testimony I move to approve file number h-2022-0076 as presented in the staff report for the hearing date of December 15, 2022, uh, with the following modification, the um, striking the fourth site-specific condition <clears throat> under the public works related to the reimbursement agreement. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve file number H2022-0076 for the Key Bank, Key Bank Meridian branch. Um, with the modifications noted. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Lorcher, go right ahead. I move we adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 None opposed. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Recording stopped. <laughs>